If you ask me which body style is the hardest to pick out, I would say the hatchback. If you think it's because of limited passenger cargo volume, then you're wrong. Actually, some hatches offer more cargo room than comparable mid-sized sedans or even compact crossovers. Many also have higher roof lines than many sedans, so we're talking more headroom and more glass for visibility. Ever hear of a liftback or fastback? Well, today I'm talking about the Mazda 3 and the Toyota Corolla hatchbacks. Which one is better and which years are best to consider or avoid if you're buying used. So hop in and let's get going. Can you tell the difference between a hatchback, liftback, fastback, and station wagon? It's getting harder to tell these days. The hatchback is a body type. Its signature style is a rear door with a rear window that's fixed at the roof and opens upwards. So what's a liftback? It's a variation of a hatchback with a sloping roof line, anywhere between 45 and 5 degrees. Whereas the traditional hatchback has a 90 to 46 degree slope. The term was first used by Toyota back in 1973 to describe the Toyota Celica Liftback GT. There's also the term fastback. It's used to define a car with continuous single slope from the roof to the tail. But the term fastback is not interchangeable with liftback. That's because fastback refers to a car's shape, whereas liftback refers to a roof hinge tailgate that lifts more upwards rather than rearwards. Yes, it is a complex mess, isn't it? Now, a station wagon is a sedan with a roof that's extended rearward over a passenger cargo area rather than a trunk. Did you know that the hatchback, rear hatch, is a car body configuration first appeared before World War II? Citroën gets credit for introducing the first hatchbacks to the car market. That was in 1938 with the Citroën 11CV Commercial. It was aimed at merchants like butchers, bakers, winemakers, and grocers who needed to transport bulky items. Originally, the tailgate consisted of two parts, an upper part pivoting to the roof level and a lower part pivoting at the bottom. After the war, production of the Commercial resumed and the the tailgate became a one-piece structure that folded back from the roof level, and that's the design that modern hatchbacks use today. Later in 1949, the company Kaiser Fraser introduced the Vagabond with the Traveler hatchbacks, described as America's first hatchback models. Then in 1970, the American Motors Corporation, AMC, released its first North American subcompact car, the AMC Gremlin, which came available as a hatchback. General Motors' first hatchback was a Chevy Vega, introduced the same year, 1970. Next year, Ford followed with its first hatchback, the Ford Pinto Runabout. The following year, the first Japanese hatchbacks entered the market, including the Honda Civic, Nissan Sunny, and Nissan Cherry. Soon came the Nissan Pulsar and the Suzuki Swift. Today, we're talking about two other Japanese five-door hatchbacks, the Mazda 3 and the Toyota Corolla. The first Mazda 3 was a 2004 model. It replaced the Mazda Poge. At that time, the five-door Mazda 3 hatchback was well-received for its performance, handling, and styling. The second-generation Mazda 3 premiered with a restyled exterior. Then, for the 2012 model year, Mazda began offering the Mazda 3 with its newly developed Skyactiv technology with a reinforced body, a new direct engine, and a new six-speed transmission. The third-generation Mazda 3 was introduced starting with the 2014 model. The updated hatchback has a more aggressive look. It came available with a choice of three engines, two of which were gasoline and one diesel. It had a 1.5 liter Skyactiv G engine with 100 horsepower and 118 pound-feet of torque. That was enough for the hatchback to go from 0 to 60 in 10.8 seconds and reach a top speed of 113 miles an hour. The diesel version was powered by a 2.2 liter Skyactiv D engine producing 150 horsepower paired with a six-speed manual or a six-speed automatic transmission. The 2019 Mazda 3 kicked off the fourth generation. By January 2019, it became Mazda's fastest selling vehicle with more than 6 million units sold. The Mazda 3 hatchback featured newly developed Skyactiv technology, including three of the latest engines, Skyactiv X with compression spark ignition, Skyactiv G and Skyactiv D, each providing fast speed control for any driving situation. Did you know that the all new Skyactiv X engine makes the gasoline engine more efficient while reducing emissions? In addition, there's now a turbo version of the 2021 model. It's an upgraded 2.5 liter turbo charge 4 that produces 250 horsepower with a torque of 320 pound-feet. It transfers power to all four wheels via a six-speed automatic tranny with shift paddles and can accelerate to 60 in an average of five seconds. But it also has downsides. For example, a massive C-pillar, large dead zones in the rear, and rear seats aren't very roomy. That said, the interior is distinguished by its high-end design and functions. The 2021 model also features a heads-up display directly to the windshield and anatomical power seats with memory and leather trim. All configurations of the Mazda 3, 
include a number of active safety functions. This includes blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. There is an available driver monitoring systems that monitors the driver's face and can notify the driver to warn of driver fatigue. There's also an all-wheel drive version, which is unusual but rather interesting for this segment. Of course, you probably know by now, this new hatchback with all new technology isn't cheap. Prices start at $21,000 and go up to $34,000. But now let's look at the Toyota Corolla. Historically, the Corolla has appealed to those who want a car that's affordable and reliable in a stylish package. But the 2019 five-door Corolla hatchback looks different. It's more aggressive than the sedan. The 12th generation Corolla kicked off with the 2019 model. Back then, it was introduced under the name Oris. Although Toyota later officially abandoned the use of this name in America, leaving the name exclusive for Europe. This 12th generation Corolla replaced the former Corolla IM hatchback and moved to the new TNGA platform, thereby becoming the first generation to offer the Corolla hatchback. But what was under the hood of the Toyota Corolla hatchback didn't meet consumer expectations. It was equipped with just a 2 liter naturally aspirated inline 4 that output 168 horsepower and 151 pound feet of torque. Of course, when compared to the 2.5 liter, 186 horsepower Mazda 3, the Corolla looks sluggish. What justified the decision by the engineer was 32 miles per gallon city and 42 miles per gallon highway. So fuel efficiency was a clear advantage of the Corolla hatchback. By the way, for an economy car, the 2019 Toyota Corolla hatchback's interior was pretty upscale. Like the Mazda 3, the driver was equipped with a powered seat with lumbar support for increased comfort. Apple CarPlay with Intune's large 8-inch touchscreen, plus it featured a 4.2-inch multi-information display with cabin equipped with 8 airbags. The 2021 model hardly added anything new to the existing hatchback. Fans are currently waiting for the Toyota GR Corolla. Not much is known about this new Corolla yet. Its arrival has been delayed from summer 2022 to late 2022. But it's safe to say there's a lot of excitement for a high-performance GR Corolla hatchback. The GR Corolla is presumed to change its previous sluggish hatchback model. So what is GR anyways? It stands for Gazoo Racing. It's a performance and motorsports subsidiary of Toyota. Gazoo Racing just recently won the 2021 edition of the 24 Hours of Le Mans for the fourth time in a row. This is the same division responsible for high-performance road vehicles like the Toyota GR Supra and GR86. Of course, Toyota hasn't revealed much details yet, but it seems it may have the same 1.6-liter turbocharged three-cylinder engine or the GR Yaris. Although at that level of power, the car is unlikely to be able to withstand the Volkswagen GTI, much less the Golf R. But there are other rumors suggesting that Toyota may install the engine from the Corolla TA series. It's a 2.4 liter engine equipped with a turbocharger and could well fit nicely into a Corolla chassis. With this engine as standard, the hatchback would be able to output at least 350 horsepower. This in turn would provide the possibility for an all-wheel drive version like the Mazda 3. The exterior of the new Toyota GR Corolla is likely to have a design similar to the GR Yaris. That would mean a much more aggressive front and rear bumper styling than the current hatchback. A wider body kit with large L alloy wheels wrapped in sticky rubber. So here's the bottom line for now. The Mazda 3 is a more powerful and performance oriented option when compared to the Corolla. Another plus for the Mazda 3 hatchback is its upscale and luxurious interior. On the other hand, the Corolla's choice of driver assistance features give it an advantage as well as high reliability ratings. The downside to both, however, is that neither of these hatchbacks wins in the passenger seat category. But if you're buying used, which Mazda 3 and Toyota Corolla hatchback models are best to consider? Let's start with the Mazda 3. The first generation from 2004 to 2007 isn't worth paying much attention to. The Mazda 3, both sedan and hatchback, have been recalled due to the fact that the plastic logo affixed to the steering wheel can become fragile, and if the airbag deploys, fragments can cause injury to the driver's face. But subsequent years of the first generation inspires more confidence. It's worth looking at a 2008 or 9 model if you can find one with low mileage and one that has been well maintained. The 2010 model seems to be the worst year for the second generation Mazda 3, with far more problems than other models of the same year. Owners reported 65 clutch failure problems for the 2010 Mazda 3 at 37,650 miles and repairs cost on average more than $1,200. Additionally, 10% of owner complaints are related to the powertrain, including gear granny problems at an average mileage of 20 to 55,000 miles. And the most common problems for that year with Mazda 3 interior accessories occurred at 55,000 miles and cost $400 to fix. From this third generation Mazda 3, I would recommend the 2018 model as the best used model for that car. 
If you're looking for a used Toyota Corolla hatchback, it seems that Toyota has just begun to develop the segment. Did you know that Toyota recalled the 2019 Corolla hatchback because 3,400 of them had CVTs that were expected to fail due to a faulty torque converter? They were all fixed before they were sold to anyone. Now, this is a serious problem, which can lead to an inevitable loss of power at any speed. And since the repair of this unit is almost impossible, Toyota had to replace the entire transmission. It's not clear that Toyota was really ready to launch a hatchback at this time, and they've been working to iron it out. If you want to use used hatchback between these two, I'd consider the Mazda 3 for now. But that's assuming you want a hatchback at all. Personally, I have my reasons why I wouldn't get a hatchback in general. Despite their utility, sometimes they're just less fuel efficient. Some hatches are shorter in length and less aerodynamic than sedans. Hatches usually weigh more than a sedan since they contain more metal and body structure with the tailgate and more glass. Some weigh 100 pounds more. Also, sportier hatchbacks have a more stylized sloping roof line, which it may look better than conventional hatches, but you sacrifice utility since you're not going to get that much usable cargo space. And don't forget price. Some car makers offer the hatchback body style only on higher trims. So this means it can cost you more than the sedan equivalent. But that's just my opinion. Now you tell me, what do you think about hatches? Which do you prefer, the Mazda 3 or the Toyota Corolla hatchback? Please comment below and share your opinion. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for your support.